Uh, from uh, uh, now onward, we're going to have our discussion in English. However, uh, at the end of the session, there will be a question and answer session. During that, we would like your active participation. At that session, you are free to speak uh, uh, or uh, ask your question in whichever language you are confident. Pashto, Dari, English, and we will provide you the answer uh, there. So we're looking forward to your active participation, and uh, I welcome Mr. Uh, Cocker. So how are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you. I'm fine. Looking forward to uh, some uh, talks about yourself. Regardless. Yes, happy to, to to share my experiences, lessons learned, and you know, give any advice I can. Okay, that's that's good. Um, so I'll just give you some you know opportunity to say mention something about yourself, like your name, where your background, where you come from, and uh, some stuff, and then we can go from there. Sure. So my name is uh, Sanzar Kakar. I'm um, half Afghan, half American. Um, I was born in the U.S., but I've spent most of my life in, um, in Afghanistan or in Pakistan across the border. Um, I'm currently the chairman of Afghanistan Holding Group. We're um, a company with 180 employees. We currently have about 220 uh, contracts, um, four offices around the country, um, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Welcome. Welcome. Um, so I understand that um, you know uh, Afghanistan Holding Group is one of the success stories of uh, entrepreneurship business in Afghanistan. But if, before we go to that, we'd like to know more about yourself as, a, as an individual. Um, can you tell us about your uh, childhood uh, and your uh, early life? Like, were you very you know spoiled kid, you know, <laughs> uh, or uh, very disciplined, or how? Sure. Well, I'll go back even before my childhood. Um, my father. I uh, was born in Faryab, up in the north, uh, uh, in Afghanistan. Um, and then um, he was doing very well in school, and so his father sent him to Kabul. And he went to Leseha Bibiya, the Bia High School in, in, in Kabul Chor. And he was the, the undefeated number one. He never missed a single point on any test he ever took. And so he got a, a, a scholarship then to go to the US uh, for higher education. Um, and uh, he, he did his uh, master's and his PhD. Um, and then I was also born in the United States um, uh, there. Um, when the Russians um, and, the, and the communist uh, era came to Afghanistan uh, and the war uh, started, my whole family actually did a reverse migration. Most people were leaving Afghanistan, my whole family came back. Um, so uh, we moved to Peshawar at that time, but my father was mainly in Afghanistan, but we were in, uh, in Peshawar there. I went to uh, Beacon House Public School uh, there in elementary. Um, uh, in high school, then I went to um, International School of Islamabad in, in Islamabad. Uh, so this Islamabad. is, uh, you were born in the U.S. and then you migrated back to exactly. uh, Peshawar and then there you started your school. School, exactly. Okay. So I was only five years old when we moved from, uh, from the U.S. To, uh, to Pakistan. And so most of my education was actually in, in Peshawar and Islamabad. Okay. Um, after high school, I graduated and I uh, went to the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Um, a, a wonderful school. Um, I uh, focused in computer science engineering mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as my uh, undergraduate. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a lot of my experiences were shaped by that, you know, the jihad time mm -hmm. in, in Peshawar. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of Afghan refugees there. Um, and, and so a lot of my experiences and, and my, uh, my, my happy memories are, are from that time. Are from that time, yeah. Um, so let's go back to your uh, school life. What kind of student were you? Undefeated? Number one, like your father? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish I, I was. I was a good student, uh, but uh, in Beacon House, I was number two. I wasn't. I wasn't the uh, the first one. Um, I didn't. I didn't speak Urdu at that time, okay. and so I didn't do well in, in, in some of the the classes that were there. Uh, but I was. I was very good at math. Uh, I liked mathematics a lot. I liked science uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, and then uh, uh, I think the the type of student that I wanted to say I wanted to challenge myself um, uh, quite a bit. Um, so, uh, in high school, um, uh, at the International School of Islamabad, um, there was a choice. People said, you know, should I take really easy classes and get, um, you know, 100% on all of them and have a good score so then I can apply for college? Or should I take very, very difficult classes, you know, advanced placement classes, um, and then it'll look good that I took some you know, difficult classes? And so, um, I was the person that took all of the difficult classes and then I got, you know, the, the, the perfect scores uh, on them as well. So I took uh, seven advanced classes, um, uh, uh, you know, while I was uh, while I was in high school there, and then uh, next to that, I also tried to do every possible thing I could. So I was in the Modern Ed Nations Club. 
I was in the soccer team, I was in basketball, I was in volleyball. I did, you know, every activity that I could uh, think of because I really, um, I wanted to, you know, push myself as okay. much as I could. But I also wanted to see what I, what I enjoyed. Um, and, uh, and through a lot of those experiences, I, um, I gained a lot. Um, with uh, Model United Nations, we traveled to more than 12 countries. Okay. And I spoke in front of uh, conferences, you know, over a thousand people. Um, so that made me much more, I think, of a confident person because of that experience, uh, because of uh, getting used to public speaking. Um, there's, a, there's a joke that people were asked, what are your biggest fears in life? Okay. So they had to rank, you know, what's, what am I most afraid of in life? And so some people, you know, wrote that, you know, they're afraid of dying. Some people, they're afraid of, um, you know, certain, you know, uh, accidents or disease or something. Animals. Uh, animals. <laughs> but actually the survey came Number one, people were afraid of public speaking. Oh. In standing up in front of people and talking. That was their number okay. one fear. Okay. Number two was death. Okay. So they were more afraid of talking in public than, they were, than of dying. So to say that they rather die than to talk in front of people. <laughs> exactly. So that, that helped me build confidence and that's helped me throughout my life. Being okay. able to um, talk, being able to be relaxed. I, I really uh, you know, gained those skills early on. Um, so, uh, how do you uh, recommend that, you know, a lifestyle of, a, a balanced uh, lifestyle between academics and, you know, social and extracurricular activities such as, you know, sports and stuff like that? Because uh, uh, some people think that there are uh, people who are fun, 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 they want to go out, they want to play football, you know, hang out with a friend, or there are people that uh, focus on studies and studies and studies. Um, so, what is your take on that? Like, yeah. you know, how balancing well, is going to help? There's the hadith that the Prophet, peace be upon him, he drew a line in the sand and he drew another line and he said, our way is the middle way. So okay. we don't go to one extreme or another extreme. And that's, that's a very valuable lesson. Whenever you have the option to do different things, the, the, the extreme, whichever direction it is, that's not, that's that's not the right way. Right. So, you know, if you, all you do is, is, um, is study, um, uh, you're going you're gonna to miss a lot of other street smarts, other skills that are also very important that you need to develop during your life. Mm -hmm. If all you do is play, similarly you're going to, you're going to lose out on, uh, on what you need to learn um, you know, from others, uh, you know, and from books and from your classes and from your teachers and, and, and from others. Um, so having, having a, a balanced way um, is very good. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, you know, we should completely um, uh, uh, you know, there are times that you need to work very, very hard, right? Yeah. So there are times, um, uh, for example, in college, uh, we had one class, it was the most difficult class in our school. Mm -hmm. It was called the operating systems class. And in this class, every uh, student had to develop an operating system from scratch. So we have, you know, Windows mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, OS. And okay. So you had to develop your own operating, operating system. system from zero. Okay. So it had to this have a file system. College. This is at college level. Okay. And so for that class, I remember for 40 days, I slept four hours a night. On forty days, four hours. Forty days night. straight, four hours per night. I slept. Okay. So, you and know, why was that? Because the, you, there was no other choice. You you had to you had to work so hard. So there are times in life you, you have to work. Hard. Procrastinate, like you know, started late on that. That's why. You, like, you were <laughs> the the class was forty. <laughs> no, I um, procrastination is is a very uh, um, uh, big challenge on okay. the economy because there's so many things to be distracted by. Okay. You know, you open up your computer to start typing and you, oh, there's Facebook, oh, there's some website, or you can check the news, you can check the TV, there's a new movie, somebody's calling, you need to eat. And there's so many distractions. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you very quickly lose, um, lose sight and it's very easy to put off something and wait until, um, you know, the last minute. Um, many things will happen at the last minute. Maybe sometimes you'll get more energized and you can perform better okay. at that time. Um, but uh, um, but getting rid of a lot of distractions mm -hmm. is, is also very very important. Okay. Um, there are a lot of things you'll find in your life that that are not very important. Um, mm -hmm. When I was in high school, one of my teachers um, uh, he he brought this big glass bowl to the room, and uh, from under the desk he took out these rocks and he put it into the bowl, and the bowl was full. Mm -hmm. And he said, "What do you think? What do you think is the bowl full?" And we all said, "Yes, Ustaz." You know, the, the bowl is full, you can't put any more rocks in the bowl. Mm -hmm. Then he took out another bowl of small pebbles. Okay. And he filled the, the pebbles in it. Right, yeah. And he said, you know, is it full? And we said, yeah, now it's really full. Uh -huh. Then he took out some sand. 
and he poured all the sand in it uh, again and he filled it all up and he said is it full and we said ah oh, we don't know you know you're going to do something else yeah. now <laughs> and so then he took out some water and he poured the water and he filled it up uh -huh. and he said what's the lesson what's the lesson in this story that the same jug that i filled up uh -huh. before you and so we said oh ustaz you know maybe when you think that your life is full you can always put more things in it, more into it. and he said no no, 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 no. no. That's, that's not the story. The story of your life, first you need to put in the big rocks. Okay. Only then the small things can go in. Right? Oh, okay. If I put the water in first, the rock's not going to fit. Not gonna fit. Yeah. So in your life, you need to figure out what are your big rocks. Okay. What are things that are most important to you? Uh -huh. Is it your family? Uh -huh. Is it your religion? Is it your career? Is it your health? Is it your academics? You need to put in the big rocks first. Okay. First, do those things. Mm -hmm. Don't procrastinate and try only little things. Don't think. Okay. Once you get the big things in, then you'll find time for the little things. Okay. So that rule from very young age, I tried to always focus on the bigger things first okay. before looking at the little things. Okay. How, how about, uh, what time do you decide about your big rocks? When is a good time uh, you know, to do that? And how it helps you to carry on your rest of your life after mm -hmm. you've decided what your rocks are actually? You know? Yeah. So that's a very difficult question. Um, when I started, I did computer science engineering. Mm -hmm. And the reason I picked it was I just said, what is the most difficult major that they have? Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, you know, University of Pennsylvania, the first computer, the ENIAC, it was developed here. Mm -hmm. So our computer science program is the most difficult program. Okay. Usually we have 140 students that uh, start at freshman, mm -hmm. and, um, but only 20 graduate. So yeah. it's, it's a very, very difficult program. So I said, okay, let's, I want to challenge myself. Let's, let's, uh, I'm paying a lot of money for this university. Let's at least get something you know, out of it. Yeah. If I study something you know, that's you know, basket weaving or something, I'm not going to you know, earn something from it. But then my grandmother, uh, uh, she passed away, but she, she said, um, whatever you do, think of it as a tool. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily that you have to do that. Mm -hmm. But whatever you start, finish it. Okay. And that was very important because when I went there, I realized actually I liked business a lot more. They had a great business school, the, the Wharton Business School there. And I liked and uh, business school. What was your major? My major was computer science engineering, mm -hmm. and my minor was economics. Economics, yeah. okay. Um, so we did engineering, both software and hardware. Mm -hmm. We developed microprocessors. It was all, all kinds of uh, crazy things. Um, but I started it, and I remembered what she said. Whatever you start, just finish it. Okay. Too many people, they start one major, then they're like, oh, I don't really like this, I want to change this. Then they mm -hmm. switch their major to another, and then another. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, you know, they, they do a little bit of everything, but they don't concentrate. They don't finish what they started. Okay. So whatever you do, my recommendation is, it doesn't matter what it is, but just finish what you started. Just finish what and then Even you, if you know, um, in the middle of, you know, you start something, at some point you know that you don't like doing something. So you still have to finish that, or what? Well, you don't like something, but you can always find interesting things. So I, mm -hmm. yes, in computer science engineering, I went and I found the best professors. Mm -hmm. One was legal studies, one was something else. So my electives, at least, I took mm -hmm. um, in other waves. Um, I mean, it, there's always problems and challenges, and you might have to you know, switch gears. Um, there's many entrepreneurs that have dropped out as well. But I, I really thought it was important to, to finish. No one is going to say in your high school, oh, what was, you know, what was your grade or, you know, what... Know, you know, how, what was your scores, but they will know if you graduated or not. Yeah. You know, in your life, they will know whether you finished school mm -hmm. or not. So that was, that was um, very important um, you know, for me is to, to finish um, what I started. Then, to decide what I wanted to do uh, in life, that's, uh, that's also very um, difficult. Many people, they, they have this dream that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish high school, then I'm going to go to college, then I'm going to get a job, then I'm going to get married, then I'm going to do all these things, and they, should, they, they think, oh, later it's what's going to happen. Okay, I'm just going to finish this. Wait, wait till, you know, one more thing, one more thing. I can't do it Taking now. the boxes. Just yeah. ticking the boxes. But they don't realize that's their whole life. Mm -hmm. It's going by. You're waiting minute for the minute. next stage without, you know, considering your, where yeah. you are. Yeah. So whatever you do, whatever you want to do, uh, your question was, you know, when to do it, when to decide, when did I decide? Um, I, I wish I'd decided, you know, 10 years earlier mm -hmm. before. I, I started seven years ago. I wish I'd started, you know, even before that. Um, so there's a... There's a Chinese uh, proverb that I like to say okay. about that. Um, and it says that the best time to start something um, uh, um, was 20 years ago. For example, okay. if you're planting a tree, right? If I plant a tree, the best time was 20 years ago if I planted a tree, because by now I can gain the fruit. Yep. Now it's, 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 it's late, I can't do it. But the second best time is today. Okay. Because then 20 years from now, you you'll be able to take the, the fruits uh -huh. of, of what you did. 
Um, so it's very important, whatever you want to do, don't make excuses. Don't wait till tomorrow or check the box or think of something else. Yeah. Whatever you want, mm -hmm. just start it today. Start today. Yeah. And the, the, the path will take you. It doesn't have to be perfect, mm -hmm. but it will, the, the journey will start today, at least. Yeah, I think it's very important because um, so every, every time is the right time to start something. So, uh, and uh, uh, some people, you know, they think, uh, they think about like, how the environment around the gas is going to shape our life. You know, they, uh, they say, okay, here we are living in Afghanistan. We don't know about how is the future going to be, you know, uh, are we going to, you know, have more challenges in the future? It's going to get better. So I'm going to start something that's going to get me until like two, three more years and then decide if things are going to be better than I'm going to go for something extra. So what's your advice to people like that who are more concerned about their surrounding than what they want to do, you know? Yeah. Those are people that make excuses. They, they blame everything else. Oh, the economy is not very good. Oh, you know, the security is not very good. Oh, there's no electricity. Oh, someone else has more money. Oh, you know, I don't have time. Oh, my health is bad. Oh, my family is not. They will constantly, you will always find an excuse. No matter what, if you wait for all the excuses to disappear, mm -hmm. it's the end of time, right? There, there will always be problems. There will always be challenges. So uh, Florence Nightingale used to say, the only reason I was successful was because I never gave and I never took any excuses. Okay. So that means that if somebody came to me and said, oh, Namesha, it's too late, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, I don't accept an excuse. Okay, let's find a way. Let's solve a problem. Mm -hmm. You just keep pushing and pushing. Excuses uh, don't help anyone. Don't help. And the same thing with yourself. Don't, don't give someone else an excuse that, ah, sorry, I was late, you know, my, you know, there was a traffic accident or this. Just don't give an excuse. You're late, you're late, halas. Don't, yeah. don't, it's your own fault. Don't blame anyone else. Don't blame the government. Don't blame uh, your, your family. Don't blame your, uh, you know, your, 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 you know, uh, the, 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 the country. Or, anything. You know. The only person you compete with is yourself. yourself. Because that's the only person that's going to judge you is yourself. Yeah. I think it was Henry Ford who said that whether you think you can do something or you think you cannot do something, you're right either way. You know? <laughs> so if you think you can do something, exactly. you can do it. Yeah. So if you don't think you can do it, you can do your job. So it's your right always. Now, um, so what kind of a person do you think you are? Like very outgoing, very, you know? Yeah, so I'm, I think I'm ex extremely outgoing. I mean, they did actually personality tests okay. at one of my first jobs mm -hmm. to see if people were introvert or extrovert. Um, I'm a, a, a Leo, uh, which is, uh, I think whoever developed the horoscope system was a Leo because it's, the, you know, the sun, the lion, you know, all of the, 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 the interesting things were there. Um, I, I, I very much um, like to be around with people. I don't like being alone. Um, I, like, um, uh, I like, you know, doing things, like challenging things. I'm very, I'm a big risk taker. Um, okay. I, I prefer very risky um, uh, uh, you know things, uh, amusement parks or, or rides. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've gone um, parasailing. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone uh, paragliding, where you go to a, a, a mountain, you jump off the mountain with a paraglide, okay. and then go down. Things that uh, you know are, are are very outdoors and kind of invigorating. I I, I really enjoy. Okay. So there's risk lovers and there's uh, 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 and others, and, and I'm, I'm I'm very much a risk lover. Let's go. Let's go. And how it translated into your professional life. Well, into my professional life, um, when, I, when I first started working, I worked for a company called Merrill Lynch. Mm -hmm. Merrill Lynch was a bank in New York, um, so I worked with them. And many people, once they get stuck in a job, they just stay there for years and years and years. Um, and they're not growing. They're not learning anything. Mm -hmm. They're not trying anything new. Um, and so, uh, but the, the reason is because they're also afraid. Well, what if I leave my job? I'm not going to have a salary. How am I going to afford it? What am I going to do? Food? Mm -hmm. Who's going to pay for the the house mm -hmm. or the car? Especially when you have children, mm -hmm. who, what's going to happen? You know, yeah. to them. So there's this fear. There's this big, big uh, fear that's there. And so, uh, being a risk lover, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, you know, the, the more uh, uh, you know, it didn't bother me that okay, I could lose everything. Yeah. Um, it, it's worth uh, it's worth trying because there's a, there's a chance that it'll succeed. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting because uh, I think we need to conclude one thing from this is that uh, fear is one of the biggest uh, impedi impediments to your success. Mm -hmm. So if you're afraid of taking the next step, mm -hmm. you're going to remain where you are for, for as long as it takes. Uh, and um, so we, uh, 
in our professional lives, uh, all we think that, okay, uh, some people like you mentioned, uh, they like to be in one place, they have a good salary, they enjoy their job or something, so they say, why, why move? Why move? Well, there's, there's many reasons. You know, if, if you're growing in your job and you enjoy it um, and, and you have stability, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's also a, a term of um, success. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that only because when you have your own business then you're successful. Mm -hmm. No, um, there's, there's many different ways of, of, of success. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I was at Merrill Lynch, um, you know, again, they, uh, they made us go through an exercise. Mm -hmm. And they, everyone, they took out a piece of paper. And they said, on one side, you write five things. Mm -hmm. Health, um, academics, career, um, um, your... Uh, your family and your religion. So these five things they wrote on the side. And then at the top they wrote uh, one year, three year and five year. And they said, okay, now everyone you do your goals. R write your goals down. Um, so, you know, I said, okay, family, you know, in one year, um, uh, you know, I want to support my parents. In three years I want to get married. In five years I want to have children. Or, um, you know, with religion. In one year I want to make sure all my prayers are on time. In three years, um, you know, I want to go to Hajj. In five years, I want to learn Arabic, or whatever it was, yeah. right? And similarly, I just every person was supposed to fill out their goals. Mm -hmm. And um, you realize that academic, career, health, there's so many more important things in life that, 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 uh, that money is just actually one of them, right? Okay. Um, if you can be successful in many other areas, you can, you can be happy, um, you can uh, really help the people around you. That's, that's, a, that's a wonderful uh, way that you can contribute to society um, as well. So after we took up this paper, they said, okay, now put it in your pocket, put it in your wallet. And every day, at night, before you sleep, you, you look at it again. And you can say, okay, what did I, what did I do to meet this goal? Um, what can I do tomorrow to help meet this goal more and more? And so I wrote these crazy goals that I thought, you know, it'll take me maybe 10 years, but I'm just trying to be ambitious. I'm okay. trying to be, you know, very excited. So I wrote oh, very, um, well, uh, I wrote it that I wanted to um, uh, first work for the public sector and the private sector. Then I wanted to um, uh, start my own business. Then I wanted to, uh, you know, expand it. Uh, and then I wanted to retire and, 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 and go into venture capital and support other businesses. Okay. These were my career goals. To okay. do. Um, and so it sounded crazy, but I said, okay, I'll just play along. I'll, I'll, I'll fill out these goals and I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. But then every day something happened. Every day when I looked at the goals, uh -huh. it, you know, they say, katra, katra, daryamish, right? Yeah. Drop by drop. So I heard, oh, somebody's going to Hajj. I said, actually, that's one of my goals. Let me go do it now. It's a great opportunity. I can, I can tick mark one of my, my goals. Uh, oh, I heard someone is... Um, um, uh, is, uh, uh, is offering uh, a job in Afghanistan. That was actually one of my goals. Let me go uh, do that. Um, uh, and that job was a venture capital. Two things in one goal. You know, to do. Um, so, exactly. <laughs> two birds with one stone. And so, believe it or not, you know, within three years, uh, most, not all, but most of my five-year goals were done. Even within many three years. Within three years. Okay. Uh, because of that. So that, that really helped me. This is because it kept yeah. me on track. Uh -huh. if, if, if I didn't have that, I would have kind of blind. What do I want to do in life? Okay. Where am I going? What's my plan? Mm -hmm. You know, they say every business needs a business plan. Okay. Right? But every person, we also need a life plan. Okay. Where are we going? What's our purpose? Okay. Um, of course, our end purpose is, inshallah, Jannah, right? Yeah. And so all of your goals, you have to work towards that as well. Yeah. How will each of these goals help me reach that? Yeah. Helping my family, how is that going to help? Mm -hmm. Because we can't take our money, we can't take our car or our house or anything with us, right? Yeah. All we can take is our, is our good deeds. Um, so you were uh, going for becoming a businessman and entrepreneur was when you were at the college and uh, um, you had those papers written to you. And uh, so you took your goals basically serious. They were not just uh, wish lists yes. or something like that. So you were... Yeah, but uh, I still needed really some... Meant, you know? <laughs> I still needed some pushing, right? Okay. Um, so I was working for Merrill Lynch. I had a great job. I had my own apartment. Uh -huh. uh, very, very nice life, you know, in New York. Um, and uh, after one year, my father he called me up. Okay. And he said, you know, Sanzar, um, New York doesn't need you. Okay. He said you can make a bigger difference in Afghanistan. Okay. So in 2005, 2006. Um, everyone, all my friends, they were shocked. What are you doing? You're leaving this great job. You're selling everything. You take two bags. You go on the airplane. You're going to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Um, 
And, uh, and then right after that, Merrill Lynch and the whole financial crisis happened. Uh -huh. Merrill Lynch was sold to Bank of America. So they all thought that I knew what was happening. <laughs> but I didn't have any plan. Uh, but in Kabul, I came and I joined a venture capital firm. Okay. I joined a venture capital firm called ACAP Partners. Uh -huh. It was a $20 million um, venture capital firm. Okay. Um, and they wanted to invest in businesses. Okay. If someone wanted to, um, to start a business or expand their business, they would provide equity financing. Okay. Um, so this was before the first suicide attack. This was when I was driving by myself from here to Islamabad, you know, in a car without any worry mm -hmm. of the security. So it was a very different time. time yeah. um, slowly the security got worse. Um, the, the first riots started happening. Um, the suicide bombing started happening. And the investors got very worried. They realized this is not a post-war economy. This is really a, a, a war economy. So uh, unfortunately that closed. Um, then I worked for, um, as an advisor from the U.S. government to the Afghan government. I was an advisor to the Attorney General of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, so for four years I did government um, uh, work. Um, and I, I was very fortunate because, you know, I, I did Merrill Lynch, okay. which was a big U.S. Corp corporation that had thousands and thousands of employees. Mm -hmm. So I learned kind of those big business, how do they operate all these systems and processes and, and and, how to do it. and then I went to venture capital, which there were only two people there. Two people there. So very small, like a startup, all operations, you know, you have to do everything from scratch. Uh, but still, I was working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, and then I joined the public sector. And the government, both the U.S. government and the Afghan government, very bureaucratic, very, very different situation. You know, you're not worried about profit and loss. You know, it's, it's a completely different yeah. situation. There's a lot of politics. There's a lot of other things uh, involved. So after all of those experiences, I decided... I really, uh, I enjoyed finance the most, and I, I, I really wanted to do something myself. You said you that were was good the, at the math goal. when you were at school. Exactly. You were a number guy. I was a number guy. I really enjoyed I was a number guy. I was also a perfectionist. Okay. I, I, you know, if there was a sign that was you know, a little bit kaj, I, I wanted to, to, to straighten it. I, I, you know, I wanted everything to be you know, clean and perfect. You know, one plus one equals two. Okay. I, I didn't like the, the humanities where you know, there's an answer, it's not really right, not okay. really true. I, I wanted along with it, you yes, know, numbers. You know, okay. I really enjoyed it. So finances, you know, very clear. You know, profit, loss. You know, for all exactly. <laughs> um, that's how it is. So we started with, um, uh, I started my company. Okay. And uh, we called it Afghanistan Financial Services, mm -hmm. AFS. And when was that? This was March 2009. March 2009. Over okay. seven years ago. Yeah. Seven years ago. Um, what, okay, before we go into your, uh, what triggered your decision to, okay, you actually experienced, uh, say, uh, best of the both worlds. You know, you work in the business world with Merrill Lynch, and also you had a taste of how to work in the public sector and the government. Uh, so you also work with small businesses, you work with the bigger businesses, so you had everything, you know. Um, what was that thing that triggered you, okay, this is the time I have to start my own business? I think it was the bureaucracy in the, mm -hmm. in the government. Okay. So if I was still with Merrill Lynch, I probably wouldn't have started my business. If I was with uh, ACAP Partners, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't. I was learning so much, I enjoyed the environment, I had great colleagues, great boss, mm -hmm. everything was very good. But then working with the government, I just felt very helpless. Mm -hmm. Whatever I wanted to do, I couldn't get it done. You couldn't do it. Right? There was so much politics, there was so much red tape, Barely. I was just seeing so much suffering. And especially I was in the Attorney General's office, so I saw so much injustice, mm -hmm. right? That I felt like I was just, I was just, just earning a salary and I, I was not helping anyone. I wasn't, I wasn't helping my country, mm -hmm. I wasn't helping myself, I wasn't helping anyone. So, so you were not enjoying what you were doing? No. That's one of the things? No. And you I wanted to make it enjoyable to yourself, but you couldn't. I wanted to make it enjoyable, and I, I wanted to say, okay, I, I, I made a difference. I helped somebody. Mm -hmm. you know, there was a problem, and, and I solved it. Mm -hmm. Not that I just sat there, and I get the salary, and get the salary, and, and nothing changed. Everything yeah. was the same, right? Uh -huh. um, I didn't want to die and, uh, and say that, Koshki. 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 If. If, if I could have done something. If I could have done something. But you didn't like and you wanted to make changes. You did look for ways to make a change there. You did your best. Yes. Or you just gave up? No, no, no. I, I definitely looked to make a change. So, and uh -huh. I'm very proud of the work that we did there okay. uh, as well. We developed the first criminal case management system in Afghanistan. Okay. So there's the seven justice agencies. Sarun Wali, Amnati Milli, Wazar Dakhila, Wazar Dafa, High Office Oversight. Uh, all of these seven different agencies, the courts, the Ministry of Justice, they had their own criminal case records. Mm -hmm. 
And, and so the same case file was going between these different offices, it would get lost, and, you know, there was corruption, there was different problems. And so we developed the first system that all the agencies would log into the same database. Mm -hmm. right? So there was a problem that this was all paperwork, um, it was not automated, and so given my computer science background, we developed the first database. Okay. Uh, we went to Pulicharchi prison, we put 4,721 inmates into that system, mm -hmm. on, and within the first day, we could see all of their cases were in there. There were people that had been in Pulicharchi prison for five years, but the sentence was only one year. Oh. So they were there four years extra, for yeah. example. Uh, so the people that were there extra, in one day, we released 124 people. Wow. 124 people were released because we found now that the database, we could just run a very simple search, yeah. how many people their sentence has finished, right? Yeah. The time is over. But nobody was asking about them. Because right? there was no tracking system. No tracking system. You had to go through the archives and go through thousands of pages and mm -hmm. find, you know, what it was one by one to figure out where, where the case was. Okay. Um, today, so that was 4,000 cases. Today, that system has 180,000 cases. And it's being launched to all 34 provinces of Afghanistan. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm very proud of, of that work that okay. was there. That's um, that I, I did try my best. I didn't just give up and, okay. and, and go. So, so that's the, 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 the purpose why I asked you that question. Um, so then you were not satisfied with uh, the work you were doing, the achievements you had, and um, you want to do something for yourself or for the society or for both? Um, for both. I mean, of course, everyone wants to, you know, provide a good life for their family, for their children, for, you know, um, you know to, to, to be well off. Um, and so there, there's, there is always that, you know, upside um, of it as well. But I think what really, you know, motivated me is that, um, that I, um, I, I saw there were so many things to do, really. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan is just this, this beautiful, open mm -hmm. market. There, there's just so much you can do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, seven years ago, I used to say, if you just even open a bowling alley, you'll be the only bowling alley in Afghanistan and you, you do, do well. Anything you do in Afghanistan, you, you'll be one of the only ones You're making news. Um, and, and you, you will, you'll be able to make a difference. Okay. And so they're, they're just, they're, it's really the land of opportunity um, and, uh, and um, so many people think about other areas because, but they're, they miss what's right in front of them. Right, they, they're looking at other people, they're looking on the other side of the fence, but they don't realize and appreciate what opportunities they have right in front of them, the simple things. Yeah. People think, I need to come up with some genius idea, you know, some special secret, some patent that I'm going to hide and I'm going to start my own business because, you know, this is some special idea. No, 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 no. Just something basic. Okay. Right? So tell us about some times of frustration when you were working with these different organizations. I'm sure you have reached a time where you were thinking that there were challenges I cannot overcome. How? how were there any... Uh, yeah, so... There, there are challenges, um, and there's, a, uh, there's, there's failures. Uh, I've failed over and over and over again. I've made big mistakes, very, very costly mistakes, um, and I've, I've, I've had to learn um, the hard way. Um, and so there's a few rules that I've made for myself after um, a lot of those mistakes. Um, but the when you were at the Saran what yeah. mistakes you made? Or what challenges you faced that made you really frustrated? Really frustrated. Yeah. Well, some of them are life and death cases, so it's very difficult to, you know, to, to discuss. The, the challenges at the Saran Wali... Um, well, are, I mean, don't want to yeah. specifically talk about Saran Wali. Any, any were, challenges. Any job, job as an employee or something, what challenges you had? Like, you really took the breath away from you. Um, I think that the challenge in ma managing work life is a, is a big challenge. Right. Um, so, I would get too caught up in a work, mm -hmm. and I would be you know, focused on it day in, day night. And then I realized, you know, I haven't seen my children, you know. And, and they're growing up, I'm not going to even, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to see them. I'm, I'm missing the most important, why am I working? I'm working for my family. Yeah. So if I don't have the time to spend with my family, mm -hmm. what's the whole purpose of, of working? So you didn't have the flexibility because you were working. Yeah, I was working seven days a week. Uh -huh. uh, there was one point I was working four jobs. At the same time, I was working okay. four different jobs. So I was, I was, I, 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 my family was suffering, my, uh, my relationship was suffering, and, and I realized that you know, the, I was putting in the water before the big rocks. Oh, okay. <laughs> I should have put the big rocks in first, first. and then the, the small. So there was a challenge for you because you were so consumed mm -hmm. with your professional life that you couldn't balance it. Yes. And it reminds me of a story of a person, and they asked him, do you have kids? He said, I have like three, four kids. I say, how old they are? He said, like, 
No, this, this match, this match, this match. I say, why? So because when I leave home, they're asleep. When I come back home, they're asleep. So I always see them like this. So I don't know how tall they are. So you may have been in that uh, situation. It must have been very hard. Yes. Um, it is hard, but at the same time, you know, it is, uh, uh, you know, you're hoping that you're going to make something that then you'll have more, more time, mm -hmm. that you'll be able, be able to be more flexible. Mm -hmm. So people, people, they think, okay, if I have my own business, I'm going to be my own boss. Mm -hmm. So then I don't need to go to work at seven in the morning and I can, you know, you know sleep in and I can do whatever I want and nobody can tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. That's a complete lie. Okay. When you have your own business, you work 10 times more than if you were to do it. It's, it's, you're going to work, you're going to get up earlier, you're going to go to sleep later, you're going to have uh, more, more headaches, more challenges. So, you know, be ready for that. There's advantages, of course. Uh, there's advantages because you can see the fruit of your labor. You don't have to, you know, deal with politics and other things as much. Um, but, um, but, but don't ever think that it's some easy ride and, and that, you know, uh, you know, once I start my business, halas, I'm just going to sit in a room and, and tell other people to work and, you know, that's it. So uh, the transition from uh, being an employee and becoming an entrepreneur, so you, one of the reasons was that you mentioned that okay, you were not satisfied with the achievements, you want to do something bigger, you want to do something for yourself and for the society and have that flexibility to be able to do. I'm sure there were times that you had a lot of ideas that you want to make change, but because you were an employee you had to take orders from someone above you. You couldn't have implemented those. Yeah. Have you, those. Well, be careful, because now you're coming up with an excuse. Okay. And I said, remember, there's no excuses. Okay. So I, I took it as an as a opportunity. I was happy that I had a job, not that it was an obstacle. Because when I had a job, I had money then to fund my business. Okay. So my first employees, they were all paid from my part-time job. Right. So I was very happy that I was employed because then I could fund my business. People say I don't have money to start my business. Okay. Uh, I didn't take money or financing from anyone else. Okay. Um, I bootstrapped it. Whatever uh, revenue I had from my salary, I paid the first few employees. Mm -hmm. And then slowly, slowly, you, know, you, 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 you put more and more and you, you add more and more on that. So it's a slower process. If mm -hmm. I had you know, lots of money, I could you know, jump quicker, yeah. um, but, uh, but this way also I didn't have to worry about owing somebody or being in debt. That, that was also very valuable for me. Okay. So uh, when you started your business in 2009, Nine. how was the situation back then? Um, the situation was for businesses. For, for businesses. Um, it was very, very different, a very, very different uh, environment. Um, uh, you know, there was uh, there were security problems, but obviously there's more security problems now. Um, there were um, uh, you know there were hurdles in the government, but there might be more hurdles now. Um, uh, there were um, there was a lot of hope in the country, um, and 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 so people you know uh, thought a lot about it. Um, however, um, you know th there's this trend that people have. Um, they think they see somebody opening a logistics company, so then everybody opens a logistics company. Mm -hmm. They see somebody opening construction, then everybody opens a construction company. They see someone opening a supermarket, then everybody has to open a supermarket, or a university, or a bank, or whatever it is. They they just copy, mm -hmm. right? And um, what's the latest trend? What's the latest trend? Swimming pool. Swimming pool. <laughs> everybody has to have a swimming pool. Uh, yeah. So it's the, but then the first people they get really afraid. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was the first university, they're going to take all my market, I'm going to compete with them. Um, and so there was a lot of that going on. Mm -hmm. There was malicious competition where people were saying, I don't want you to do this because I want to, you know, you're taking the market from me. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I tried to do something, I said, okay, I want to do something that uses the mind. It's not easy to compete with. Yeah. Right? If I bring you know, water, then people can say, okay, I'll open a water bottling plant as well. And then there was 40 water bottling plants. Right? Okay. Or I'll, I'll ship it as well and they'll do it you can never, there's two ways to compete. One is on quality and one is on price. Okay. You will never win if you compete on price. There will always be someone that can do it cheaper than you. Okay. There will always be manufacturing companies in China that can make it cheaper than you. There will always be IT people in India that can do it IT better than you. Right? If you compete on price, in my opinion, you will always lose. If you compete on quality, that's, that's where the difference is. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, when I started something, I saw all of these copying people, mm -hmm. and I thought if I do something, people will just copy the same thing and they'll do it themselves. Okay. Right? So I wanted to do something that people couldn't copy easily, mm -hmm. because it required skills, mm -hmm. it required brand name, it required a very high level of, of quality, of technical abilities that maybe didn't hit people out. So I started um, uh, financial management, 
and uh, it was with the central bank. We did their um, systems and, 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 and financial management. And then we did taxes. It was a very complicated, difficult. You needed high skills of legal, of finance, of accounting, of working with the government, of negotiation, all these different things together. It was not easy to copy it, although people did copy it. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you about that as well. But um, I tried to start something that I could compete on quality. And I wanted to be the, the, the best of the best mm -hmm. and not, um, not worry about somebody coming and just doing it one rupee cheaper mm -hmm. uh, or one of one cheaper and then, then yeah. taking the whole market from me. From, from okay, and uh, you started the financial management services. Uh, what was the name of your company? Uh, AFS, Afghanistan Financial Services. Afghanistan Financial Services. And uh, you were the only one who started with this idea or you had a partner or colleagues or something you worked with? You. Um, so one of the lessons that I learned from ACAP partners was that I saw many companies that they had uh, partners. Okay. And the partnerships, they broke apart. Okay. Um, when the business is good, sometimes the partnerships last, but every business is going to face challenges. Uh -huh. And when the business faces challenges, then the partnership comes apart. Okay. And it becomes very messy. Okay. You know, the partners get upset, um, and they, even if they're family, they start arguing. So I learned from when I was in the venture capital, sir, that whatever you do, just, just start it small, but start it yourself. If you need partners, do a, a, a prime contractor and subcontractor relationship. Okay. Don't do something. Even if you have to do a partnership, then always do partnership on revenue, not on profit. Okay. Now this is very important. If you do partnership on profit, uh -huh. then you'll say, okay, after all of the expenses, we're going to share the profit. Okay. But you're going to fight on the expenses. I don't accept this expense. Why did you travel here? This is not a good, ex I would have done it cheaper. You fight on all the expenses. Mm -hmm. And so then you never agree on the profit. What is the profit of the company? Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't have any profit. Then what do you do? Right? Mm -hmm. So if you do an agreement with somebody else, always do your calculations on the revenue. Don't do your calculations on the profit because that will always, you'll come up to a fight with it. Revenue is clear, profit is more difficult. Mm -hmm. And second, I tried not to do with, with, with family. Now, I have a wonderful family. They're very, very highly educated. Mm -hmm. But in business, there'll, there'll be good times, there'll be bad times. Yeah. And there'll be times when you're not going to get along. Um, there are going to be times that you have to fire somebody, you have to fire a vendor, you have to fire a client, you have to fire an employee. With family, it's very difficult to fi fire, fire your own family. Right? Mm -hmm. So you, your business decision mm -hmm. is going to be clouded. You're going to have a bias with your family. Yeah. So keep your family, help your family, support them. They're the reason. They're one of the big rocks, is your family. right? But don't mix them with business. Keep okay. your family separate, keep your business separate. And if you partner, partner on, on revenue. Don't partner on okay. profit. So you didn't have any like partners? No, but it was 100% myself. Yeah. And uh, did you have enough capital to start your business? Um, I did not. You did not. Um, so every month I was worried, will I be able to pay the salaries or not? Okay. Will I be able to pay the rent for the office uh, or not? Um, and so I moved, um, because of the rent, I moved from Gulbar Plaza to my father's house. Okay. And my father was very kind uh -huh. to, to provide a free space. Um, I was worried about salary because of the hadith that says, when somebody does work, um, you should pay them before the sweat dries. Okay. Like, that's how quickly you should pay them. Right? You shouldn't delay their salary one month or three months or six months and then pay them later. No, 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 no. Pay them on time, pay them regularly, pay them the same. Uh, day uh, because that will build uh, confidence in you okay. and it's the, it's the right way to do it. It's how you should treat people. Is treating you. So I didn't have enough capital. I was you know, very, very worried uh, about every month and that's, that's the time I, I took four jobs because I, I, I needed to, to work anywhere. I, I worked consulting, work here, I did this project here, I helped this other person here just so that I could keep funding my business and keep it alive. Okay. And uh, the four jobs you were earning, you were getting small percentage of it for your own expenses and the rest would go for your... Uh, exactly. exactly. So then, uh, so actually in a way, your professional work actually helped your business. Very much so. It does. Uh, if I didn't work, I wouldn't have the experience. Mm -hmm. I would, almost everything that I applied in my business, uh -huh. I learned working someplace else. Somewhere else. Processes, procedures, how to treat people, HR. I mean, a business is not just one thing. If you're the best programmer in the whole world, if you're the best doctor in the whole world, it doesn't mean you can run a successful business. Mm -hmm. The best doctor in the world doesn't have a successful hospital. No. The best programmer in the world doesn't have a successful I IT company. Mm -hmm. Because in a business, you have to be the driver, mm -hmm. you have to be the HR director, you have to be the IT, you know, fix the computers, you have to be the cleaner, you have to be the, um, the you know, every, all the different, you have to have all the skills that you have to do, mm -hmm. a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. right? You have to be, 
um, to, to be able to uh, successful. But you also have to know your own weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do something, you have to find the right people to do that. So if you think you can do everything and you're so arrogant that you know I'm my way is the right way, then definitely you'll fail the first day, right? Okay. If you recognize these are things that I don't know, mm -hmm. um, and you find the people to help you, and you appreciate them, um, that that's really what will make a difference. Mm -hmm. And was it uh, difficult to make that decision? To start the business? Start the business. Very very difficult because Have the job reluctant sometimes. Okay, I'm not going to do this. The job that I had, uh -huh. it paid. Um, more than any other job I could imagine. It gave me health insurance. Um, it gave me a travel benefits. It gave me a phone. It gave me all of these things. So I said, okay, well, uh, what if, uh, if I lose my job, I'm not gonna have health insurance. Um, then what if my children get sick? Uh, what if this happens? Um, what if, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, if I don't have any money, how can I feed my family? I can pay my rent. My parents are dependent. Well, what can I do in a lot of different things? So there's a lot of tashwish. Where, what if I fail? Everyone is saying, oh, 80% of new businesses fail. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty likely. It's most likely going to yeah. fail, yeah. right? Um, so it, it, it's a very, very difficult um, decision. And uh, so with, despite all that, they checked you or something, provide you all the benefits, you decided to start your own business. I did. Although you didn't have um, uh, enough money to do that. No. So what you had was an idea, right? And you're, you were confident about your idea back then? Like, okay, this, this is a good idea, it's gonna work. Were you thinking like that? Um, I, th I mean, I thought that, you know, if I, if I try my best, I'll be able to do it. Um, we originally did um, systems for the central bank. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought I could do a lot more foundations in the financial markets and capital markets. Mm -hmm. And I could you know, start, you know, things there that had an idea, you know, to, to do what I was doing at Merrill Lynch in terms of equities and debts and, and, mm -hmm. and, and Sukuk and all these different things I could, could bring them to Afghanistan. Uh, but what I learned really, the, the market didn't care about my ideas. Mm -hmm. The market had its own need. Okay. All right? The market's need was that companies were having trouble filing their income tax returns to the Ministry of Finance. Okay. They were having uh, problems uh, getting their tax clearances. They were having problems renewing their licenses. That was the market need. Okay. They didn't care what my idea was, my vision was, my great plan that I'm going to do this for Afghanistan and on and on and on. So what you have to do is you have to figure out what the market wants and you have to satisfy the market need. What does your customer want? And then the market will pull you in that direction. So we, my idea, we didn't get any money. We didn't help anything at all. Very quickly, all we did was tax. The market pulled us. This was what the market needed. We have to see what the market wanted. And that's how we grew. All of the product, products that we did was because of market demand. So your idea actually was to fill the gap that existed in the market. So your idea satisfied the need for the market. Uh, that's how. So basically, that's, I think that's entrepreneurship, you know? That you see a challenge in the market that, or in the society that doesn't have a solution yet. So you come up with a solution. And if your solution is the right solution and the market observes it, and then you start something. So idea basically burns, yeah. is born that way. So exactly. there was, there was, um, you see a gap. You see a problem, it's a problem you could be facing, it's a problem other people could be facing. Maybe you hear somebody complaining. Oh, you know, um, I hate all of these jumps in the road, bumps in the road. So then, you know, you start a company, well, okay, bumps in the road, how can I solve that? Maybe we can uh, find a business that all they do is they clean the bumps and they get the petition of the people, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. You find out what the people's problems are, what they don't like, and you help them solve it so they get happier and better and their lives are better. So that's, that's innovation basically, you start a new thing, a new, new thing, new idea and then uh, based on the people's needs. So it doesn't have to be like idea coming from somewhere like, you know, completely out of touch with the reality, you know, it has no, to no. be based on the on and reality. On realities on that. And then it was difficult, you had doubts about it, where the, but the market responded well and then you, uh, you, uh, you started your business as a financial manual services. The first uh, parts were very difficult and you were paying from your own pocket to your employees um, have you have you run into any failures like you were about to fail and stop your business um, yes 
um, you know, there's people that have come and said, you know, um, uh, I want, I'm going to be doing exactly that. If you don't uh, stop, then we'll, 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 we'll see about your security. I can't carry your security, right? Okay. In Afghanistan, people will threaten all, all sorts of things. Okay. Um, that they will, uh, they'll try to, um, you know, there's, there's people that are jealous. Um, there are people that are just common thieves. Um, there are people that think that, you know, um, that, uh, that, that they can only succeed if you fail. Right? Mm -hmm. they, they don't see win-win. Um, and this is very important for everyone to understand, is that just because someone is your competitor doesn't mean that they're your enemy. Right? So I saw, after I started a tax consulting business, um, uh, there was the big four, of course, but then I saw about 20 new tax businesses that came up over the next five years. Um, and many people were like, oh, they're just copying your idea, they're taking the, the clients from you. And I said, no, 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 no. You're looking at this completely different. Mm -hmm. You're making an excuse, right? Your competitor could be your best friend because the market was not used to people paying for tax. Everyone was doing their own tax services. Mm -hmm. But now suddenly there were other tax providers and they were also telling people, okay, here, you can, you can hire a company to do taxes, less headache to do so. All of a sudden that opens up the market for us. Now this is a, this is a practice. Why should you do your tax yourself? You can hire one of these companies to do mm -hmm. so, right? And many of my uh, many of my clients, I you know I didn't want to do work for them uh, because you know they were smaller companies. But then our competitors provided tax services to them. That was great. They were filling the market. But then when those companies became bigger, they needed our services. Mm -hmm. But if they'd been doing it all alone and my competitors didn't exist, then maybe that would have never been a client for me. Mm -hmm. Or maybe my competitors made a big mess and I had to be, get called to clean it up. Right. Clean it up. So they, they say that when you look at a glass and there's there's water in it. Are you going to say, okay, it's half empty? Or are you going to say, no, 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 half full? Half, right. It's a big difference in how you look at everything. There's a hidden blessing behind everything you do. Every challenge that you face, however horrible it is, you, you, don't, you might not see the blessing in it. You, know, you might not see the benefit in it. But, but everything is from Allah. Right? We, we yeah. believe that. Right? Everything is from Allah. So the, the example that I give, I have a, a six-year-old daughter. I told her, go clean your room. Right? And she goes and she takes all of the things out of her closets and she puts it on the floor because she needs to clean the closet. And then I come into the room and I say, what are, what are you doing? I told you to clean your room and you made a bigger mess. Right? But no, no, no. You, I didn't have that patience. Mm -hmm. Because to clean up, first you have to, you have to get things organized. You have, to, you, have to put it, you have to put it away. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and so even the most horrible things, you know, there's a suicide attack and the whole building is blown up and all these people die. What good is in that, right? You think to yourself, how horrible is this situation? But no, there, there's a benefit in, in that as well. Th those people might, uh, you know, uh, go, go, go straight to heaven, of course, become shaheed. Maybe they would have been suffered uh, on earth for something else. Maybe they didn't feel um, any pain. Maybe that business owner opened up something uh, bigger for him. Mm -hmm. So we should always, when, when something, when you see a failure, when you see something horrible, when you see a challenge, don't ever look at the negative side. Always look behind it, look for the fruit, and you'll find it. Okay. You might not find it today or tomorrow, eventually you'll see that there was some hikmat in it. There was some barakat in it. Okay. And, uh, so, uh, what challenges you faced, other than you know, having financial difficulty and you know that? When you started your business, what were the challenges? as a, you know, specific to business challenges, what you face? I um, found a challenge that it was very difficult to find, um, you know, very um, reliable um, uh, people, right? Mm -hmm. um, because at different phases of a business, you need different type of people. When you start a business, there's an entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. He's this wild, wild person that's going to go and start everything and push everything and he's very aggressive. And, mm -hmm. But then when your business matures, you need a more calm person. You need someone that's there and solves the issues and is reliable for customers. As you grow, you need different types of leaders. Um, and so, uh, you, for, for me, it was very, very difficult to, to find um, you know, the, the right type of um, people for um, the right job. Different people have different skills. Some people, they're very, very good at politics. Some people, they're very, very good at uh, finance. Some people are very good at managing people. Some people are very bad at managing people. Um, 
And, and so it's very, very difficult to, um, you know, to, to find the, the right mix of people to always, always uh, yeah, find the needs. Um, and, um, you know, I'm by nature a very trusting person. So I would, um, you know, it's very difficult for me to believe that somebody is lying straight to my face. Okay. But there's all types of people in the world. There are people that are incredibly honest and they will always have your back. They will take a bullet for you. They will be there for you in your worst times. They'll be there for you in your best times. But there's other people that maybe as soon as they have an opportunity, uh, they'll stab you in the back. Mm -hmm. Seven years, you could do good work for them, but they could, they could do that. So th there's all type of people in the world. You should be very, very careful who you trust, mm -hmm. um, who you give you know, responsibilities um, you know, for. And you had to face but, with people like that? Uh, unfortunately, everyone does, right? Mm -hmm. Both in your personal life, in your professional life, um, when you go to the government, when you travel, when you meet, you know, whoever it is, you're, you're going to face all types of people. Um, and, and you shouldn't lose your trust in people. That's not good either. You should always, you know, believe in people and have faith in them and inspire them and motivate them. Um, but then, you know, uh, uh, don't depend on them as well. You need to be independent. You shouldn't, you know, if, 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 uh, um, if you shouldn't see that all my whole life and my livelihood and my, my children are all dependent on, on someone that, that, that's not someone else like that. So that was your coping strategy. Like you had, that's how you coped with uh, when you face people who are uh, who had ill intentions towards you or your business. Mm -hmm. How how did you manage that? The first thing is to keep um, integrity, uh -huh. right? It's like when you lie. You might think it's always just a small lie, uh -huh. but that lie is going to grow. Yeah. And then you have to say another lie on top of that lie, and another lie on top of that lie, and that grows and grows and grows. It's like a cancer, mm -hmm. right? Everything you do, right from the beginning, even if it's a small negative thing, just, just cut it right there. Don't let it grow. If it's a small problem, it's always going to grow into a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. right? If you let it. If you let it grow. Mm -hmm. So stop it before, before it grows. Stop it when it's at its roots, before it grows into a big, uh, you know, a, a big thing. Um, and, and, and so face your problems up front. Don't just hide, oh, it's going to get better, uh, don't worry, you know, tomorrow it's going to change, and then just keep ignoring it, ignoring it. If you have a problem, that's, that's, your, that's what you should prioritize. Mm -hmm. Don't think, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and then eventually the problem is going to go away. Your problems are not going to go away. Yeah. You have to face your problems and always make sure that you keep your integrity. What goes around comes around. There, there's some people that you will see that are doing things the wrong way, and you'll be tempted to do it the wrong way. You'll pay a bribe, you'll do something wrong, because you're like, everyone else is doing it, there's no other way to do it. They'll say, that's, that's Afghanistan, halas shirini, it, that's the way it is, you know, otherwise you can't do any business, you're not going to be successful, you're going to be failed. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to say. No. No, not at all. Because when you start, that work that you do, bebarakat mm -hmm. And slowly, slowly, it's going to contaminate everything else that you do. And that's going to get worse. When you sacrifice your principles on one thing, you're going to do it on something bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you, you've lost all your integrity. And then there's no point of doing business. Because what's the point of doing business? is to be honest. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have any halal revenue, it's all haram. Yeah. So, and and it's going it's to fit. A lot of things can make your business haram if you lie to somebody, you know. Yeah. And if you uh, treat somebody not nice and all that, just to make a profit and all that. Um, so... So sure, there were challenges, and there, the way to cope with them is to be to never lose your, you know, principles. You you have to do the right thing to work on that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, entrepreneurship itself, and then from there we can also uh, add your personal experiences uh, uh, that you gain starting a business or something. Uh, what do you think is entrepreneurship? Like you are you different. There like entrepreneurship is solving problems. Mm -hmm. that, that's really the, the core of what I, what I see it is. Mm -hmm. You see some problem, you see someone's facing some challenge, and, and you, want to, you want to stop that problem. Right? Um, now, uh, the, the bigger the problem, um, the more difficult it's going to be. So don't try to do everything in the world. You, you say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Try to narrow it down. It's a very small problem. Solve that problem, and then you can kind of expand and build on it, you know, mm -hmm. step by step. So, Entrepreneurship really is solving problems. Just because you work, people think that, okay, starting a business, that's entrepreneurship. If you're not solving anyone's problems, I don't think it's entrepreneurship. No. It's just wasting money, mm -hmm. right? 
If you're in a job and you're solving problems, that's entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. If you see problems and you're recommending solutions, whatever, at your current employer, that's great. Um, entrepreneurship is really um, have, being proactive and not reactive. If I'm sitting down waiting for people to bring papers to me and I'm going to you know, sign it and hop, that's not entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is looking around and seeing, seeing issues and then taking the initiative to change it. To, and that initiative may also entail risk. Risk, risk. The, but the greater the risk, the greater the reward. The reward. So people in Afghanistan, they say, okay, it's too risky here, you know, the, the government's so difficult, oh, you know, the regulation's so high, they increased the taxes, they've done this, they've done that, um, you know, the, the, there was no electricity for one month, um, I can't find good people, I might as well, you know, go abroad and, and do something else. They, they think there's, it's too risky too to do risky, it. Yeah. And, and I say, perfect, great that it's too risky, you should be happy. The more risky it is, the better the opportunity. That means that the bigger, well-established companies are not are going to go away, right? Yeah. In in my company, some of the big four companies closed and left Afghanistan. That's more opportunity for me, right? During the time of the Taliban, if you purchased some land in Wazir Parhan, you would have bought it for a very low amount of price. Yeah. It was very very risky, right? It was the most risky time, but look how successful you would have been now, right? So it's the same thing now. You think it's so risky, it's so horrible. This is the worst time to invest in Afghanistan. No, 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 no. It's the best time to invest. Because everyone else is leaving. The, the market opportunities are opening more and more. And, uh, and uh, uh, th that's when uh, you'll be able to do it. The, the, the prices for rent are going down. Um, uh, there was a time you couldn't, uh, you couldn't find a proper villa because it was just too expensive to, to rent it. Yeah. Um, now the prices are going down. You can find very excellent employees. Uh, you know, uh, in Afghanistan, because a lot of the coalition forces there have gone down, there's more unemployment. All of these, you could look at it as a horrible thing. Oh, there's so much unemployment. Oh, there's so or you could look at it as a positive thing. Oh, great. That means I can find some great talent that's underutilized and I can utilize it, right? So, uh, I, I, I never cost really low and stuff like that. Exactly. Um, so, um, what are the other reasons to start in Afghanistan? The other reasons, well, for me it was, um, uh, there's, I have a big nationalistic sense, you know. Mm -hmm. If we don't fix Afghanistan, who is? Right? The people in this room. Just think about it. Are you, who are you going to leave Afghanistan to? Right? Is it going to be your parents? Is that generation? Is it going to be the next generation? Right? No, this is our country, this is our soil. If you go to another country, for example, uh, there's some Gulf countries, you have to find another sponsor. And that sponsor, everything is going to be under them. That sponsor has to be a shareholder. They're going to be able to get profits. They're going to do anything. It's never going to be yours. You're always going to be the foreigner yeah. there, no matter where you go. Right? But this, this, you own it. This is your, your land. These are your people. This is your name. This is your country. This is your future. Right? Mm -hmm. So, it, there, yes, there might be opportunities other, other places as well. Uh, it's a small world. But um, Afghanistan you'll be able to succeed where you can't others, right? Mm -hmm. you, you might think the system is bad, but at least you know the system. In other countries, you might not know the rules. You might not know the system. You might not know the people, right? Here, you know the good people and you know the bad people. You know the good families and you know the bad families. You, you know who to do it. So I, I, I really think there's many, many reasons, you know, to, to invest in Afghanistan, to stay in Afghanistan, to work in Afghanistan, to learn in Afghanistan, um, because really the future is here, right? The other countries, they've already been saturated. The market has everyone. Who, who are you to compete with first? Right? It's already, the, the cup is full. <laughs> right. yeah. Here, there's, there's, there's an opportunity um, to do so. Um, and it has, a, it has a bright future. They estimate over $3 trillion of mining here. Just natural resources. We have more fresh water than most of our neighbors. We have agriculture. There, I mean, in every way you look at it, we're, we're, we have, uh, God has given us a massive amount of, uh, of gifts. So, so, for Afghanistan, the, 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 the the, all the ingredients are there, right? You have 30 million population. They need services. They need goods. They need a life, right? You have fantastic agricultural land. You have fresh water. Um, you have um, uh, you, uh, you know, six different neighboring countries. We have, you know, I mentioned already, three trillion worth of uh, minerals. Uh, we have a wonderful youth population. Most of the developing economies of the world, by the way, they're aging. Their workforce is all getting older and older and, and leaving. Afghanistan, 70% of the population is under the age of 25. We have, or 30, we have a very young, dynamic, energetic, 
smart, brilliant, athletic. I mean, Afghans are, 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 are some of the best, uh, you know, uh, smartest people, best looking people in the world. I mean, it's really, all the ingredients are there, right? Now, the, the question of whether or not it's going to succeed, that's in your hands. Don't wait for someone else to make Afghanistan succeed, and then I'm going to start my business. If you make it succeed, then Afghanistan will succeed. If the people in this room, you do something about it, then it will succeed. Um, so what was the social impact for your organization? Like what, what, what uh, uh, there's many, many. One is um, the, we, we grew as a family. Uh, we have our community of, uh, of 180 employees. Mm -hmm. They support their families. Um, we were helping the government stand on its own feet. We collected over a billion Afghani in taxes last year. Um, so we want the government to be able to have the resources not to be dependent on foreigners or, or others, but to be able to be uh, independent. Um, we um, are, are trying to make a model for ourselves that, yes, you can do business in Afghanistan without giving bribes. Yes, you can be, there is a way to do it uh, right way. And people should learn that, no, you, you, you know, we have to be an example uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, for others. Um, so there's, there's numerous ways to do social uh, uh, impact. Um, now, th this idea that you mentioned about, you know, ham sawab, ham khurma, is, is very, very important. Um, if you're doing something that doesn't have a social benefit, um, I don't recommend it because it's not, it's not sustainable, uh, really. If you're going to develop some you know, special video game, then who are you really helping? You're just wasting people's time. You're not solving anyone's problems. Try to do something that's going to solve people's problems. And even this word innovation, people think, oh, innovation, I have to come up with some new product or some service. No, you can take a very simple existing product and just change it a little bit, make it better. Give it to a new way, a new market, a new audience, a different, it doesn't have to be something great. And the example that, that's, that's really great for this is the example of Hanagi. So Hanagi is a uh, non wai it's a bread um, uh, 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 bread seller. So um, uh, when when they wanted to start Hanagi, the the owners. Um, uh, oh, where was that? Uh, uh, this is just um, last year. Okay. Um, uh, the the owners were, were people were saying why why do you want to start a, a bread a non wai There is a non wai on every corner. You know that's not that that's not innovation. Mm -hmm. That's not something new. That you know how are you going to how are you going to compete? There's there's uh, there's more non wai than you can imagine, right? Um, but no, they opened it, they decided we're going to make whole wheat bread and we'll add walnuts and we'll add maybe uh, sesame and we'll add black seeds mm -hmm. and we'll do it uh, with a better flavor and better quality and we'll, we'll have some, uh, you know, cream and we'll have some, uh, you know, other products that people will like as well. Now they're a, a wonderful, very successful non -wai. Now think about that. You don't have to, oh, I don't have any idea, you know, give me some idea, what can I do in Afghanistan, colleges should that. No, 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 pick anything, anything that you are passionate about, that you enjoy, that you're interested in, that you love doing, and just do it better. Whatever it is, it's there, do it a little bit better, mm -hmm. right? If it's in your own job, whatever you're doing, do it better than everyone else, then you'll succeed. Yeah, at all. I thank very much Mr. Sindar Kakar for your time. I thank you very much for participating in this uh, um, uh, uh, session with us. Please continue your interaction with us. And I did talk about Founder Institute. Founder Institute is uh, also one of the places where you can get a lot of help for your business, especially if it's technology related. Um, keep talking to us. Keep send us emails. You know, please send Mr. Kakar emails. You know, talk to him. Ask for his pay. So do, just don't think it's going to be the last of your sessions regarding this. And I'm going to do one quick final survey. How many of you want to start your own businesses? That's, that's very good, that's very good. I wish I, could, uh, I had the survey like that before so we could see the differences, <laughs> you know, how much of our talk. But it was a good number today. Uh, so again, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Kaukar. Thank you very much for uh, today's session. And uh, let's go to the next one. Thank you.